Hey, what is up guys? So, as promised, uh, here is the next uh, video <coughs> that uh, we do. And we start with options. This part is going to be very important. So, I need you to pay very well attention because um, it's the basis for us option strategies. It's very important that you understand options very good. Anyway, what is an option? Um, let's take a look uh, on a future or forward contract again. A forward contract was a contract between two parties where both parties are obligated to fulfill that contract to buy or sell the underlying, um, a certain amount of underlying at a predetermined price in the future. That's why when we talked about a forward contract, both parties would have to, you know, pay some sort of security if you want which was the margin in the margin account and so on and so forth now with options only one party has an obligation the other party has only an option so that's why it's called option so the buyer of an option or the or the so-called option holder he has only the right but not the obligation of buying or selling depending on what type of option it is the underlying asset at the predetermined price that we call the strike price okay so only one party has an obligation uh, and that is the seller the seller has to sell at that price whatever it is or has to buy um, at a certain price whatever it is so um, the seller has the obligation, the buyer has only the option, the right, but not the obligation. That's important to know, very important to know. Now, so the seller of an option, we call him an option writer, and the buyer of an option, we call him the option holder. Now, the buyer of the option for having that right, but not obligation, which means it's very nice and beneficial if you're a buyer of an option, right? So. Uh, you have the right if you want you do it you obviously only do that if it's profitable for you and if it's not profitable for you you don't do it um, I get into that uh, very soon so for that right the option buyer pays some price which is the price of the option and the option uh, holder uh, sorry the option writer who is the seller of the option who receives that money as a compensation for the eventual obligation that he or she has to fulfill so, for example, um, let me, before going to example, let me just repeat the definition one more time. Uh, a call option, a, a call option is the right to buy, okay? So, uh, uh, in opposite to that, a put option is the, is the right to sell. So, we start with a call option, that's a little bit easier. So, again, a call option is the right but not the obligation, it's the right to buy a given quantity of an underlying asset at a predetermined price, which we call the strike price, on or before a specific date. Of course, that right is not forever, but you know it expires at some point. You have the right just for a certain amount of time. So for example, a July 2016 call option on 100 shares of Apple stock at a strike price of 100 gives the option holder the right to buy 100 shares of Apple for $100 each prior to the third Friday of July 2016. So obviously this slide is old. Uh, the book is from uh, printed, I think, 2015 or 14. So back then, you know, 2016, July 2016 was in the future. But let's say it's uh, from 2015, right? So until the third Friday of July 2016, so that's the expiration date of the option. It's usually on a Friday, by the way. Um, the third Friday of July of 2016, until that date, has the option holder, the buyer of that option, the right, but not the obligation, to buy 100 uh, stocks of Apple at the strike price, and the strike price happens here to be also $100 each. Which means, if by the uh, third Friday of July 2016, an Apple stock is worth more than $100 on the market, 
then of course the option holder the buyer will execute his right and he will buy for a hundred dollars because it's worth more on the market so even if he doesn't want to keep those apple stocks he can buy them for a hundred and immediately sell them in the market and make a profit uh, and he would not execute that right if the price on this stock's market is less than a hundred dollars so in which case the seller of the option wins what does he win well the money that he he received for selling the option that's essentially all profit because um, yeah he doesn't have to uh, sell it uh, for a hundred dollars while it's worth more than hundred dollars in the market so that's essentially how it works right uh, if you are not sure if you understood it properly before you move to put options um, you should stop and think about it again rewind the video or look in YouTube or Google and read again more about call option just about call option don't confuse yourself with put because um, it's important that you understand this very well before you continue okay um, now as I mentioned the writer of a call option must sell the share if and when the holder chooses to use the call option which would be the case when the price of the underlying is above the strike price now the holder of the call option is not required to buy the shares it's an option it's optional but of course he would do that when the price is above 100 he would not do it if the price is at 100 or below makes no sense um now a little bit of definitions um if assuming today when you want to buy the option if today would be the expiration date of the option of the option sorry and the uh, you would execute so how should i say when you execute the right today if, if hypothetically you could execute the right today you would do that which means you would make money then we call the option to be in the money let me tell you another example so let's say that apple option with the strike price of a hundred dollars which means you have the right to buy apple stocks at a price of a hundred dollars now if today the price of apple stocks is 120 dollars that option is in the money right it has some intrinsic value so if you would execute it you would make immediately twenty dollars you buy it for a hundred you can sell it for hundred and twenty that is called in the money um, so for a call option it means the strike price is below the price of the underlying for a call option for a put option it would be the opposite um, now if the price um, of the underlying is exactly at the strike price of the option so uh, price of apple is exactly 120 dollars and zero cents and the and the option price the strike price of the option is also 120 dollars and zero cents the strike price of the option not the price of the option is also 120 dollars and zero cents then it's exactly at the money and um, if you know um, and, and that at the money is true for both call and put options so but both of them if the strike price equals the price of the underlying you're at the money but in the money and out of the money that the, the first and the third one are different for call options and for put options so be careful about that now if the strike price uh, is uh, ab you know uh, exceeds the market price of the stock for, for call option we call it it's out of the money so for example the strike price is 125 for the apple stock and the apple stock today is let's say 120 then that one option is out of the money apple it means apple stock does the price of the underlying has to move by five has to go up by five so that the, the option is at the money by five dollars right or by more than five dollars to make the option be in the money so that's important to understand um, and if you understood this all that stuff really well then we can move on to put options if not again please 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 stop 
rewind, listen again, think about it, uh, watch other YouTube videos, whatever helps you, read into, look into books, whatever helps you to understand it very good. That's very important to understand. So now, if you have done so, if you understood call option, let's move on to put options now. Now for the put option, it's essentially very similar to a call option, just with the difference that the buyer of the put option, instead of buying the right to buy the underlying, now it gets complicated, he buys the right to sell the underlying. So you got it? It's like, so I pay money, I buy a put option this time, not a call option anymore. It's still an option, I have the right, but not the obligation, but now I have the right to sell Apple stocks at the strike price of let's say hundred dollars, which means I have the right to sell uh, uh, Apple stocks to the buyer of the option at this at the price of hundred and twenty. And of course, I would only do that when Apple stocks are worth less than hundred and twenty dollars in the market, because that's profitable for me. You know, I can sell something at a higher price. He has to buy it from me at a higher price because I bought from him that option. It's like a contract. If I choose to sell it to him at the price of $120, he has to buy it from me no matter what the price is on the market. Even if the price, even if Apple company is, let's say, bankrupt and the stock is worthless, he has to buy it from me at the price of $120. So as you can see with the put option, the option holder, the, the person who bought the option uh, profits as the price of the underlying goes down. The lower the price, the better for the option buyer or option holder, and the worse it is for the option writer or the option seller. Um, and so, yeah, um, that's uh, also interesting to notice. So the same terminology is used. We also have in the money, at the money, and out of the money for put options, but it works a little bit different. So essentially. Uh, put option is in the money if the price of let me think if the price of underlying if the current price of the underlying is below the strike price of the option yeah that's how it goes exactly so the price of underlying as of today must be below the strike price of the option then we, we, we call it is in the money because if today would be hypothetically the expiration date of the option I would execute the right okay it would be profitable for me to do it so it's in the money there's some intrinsic value in there um if it's exactly the same so strike price of the apple option is uh, let's say a hundred dollars and price of apple stocks is exactly a hundred dollars then it's the same price it's at the money and my option is out of the money if um the price of the underlying is above the strike price of the option exactly so the strike price of the option is hundred dollars for put option but if the price of the underlying for example the apple stocks are higher than hundred then that option would be as of today if i would execute it I wouldn't make any money with that, so it's out of the money. Because why would I sell it to the guy at the price of $100 when I can sell it in the stocks market for, let's say, $110? I would be stupid, right? So I would not want to write or execute that, right? I just let the option expire without doing anything. And I lose some money, which is the money that I paid to buy that option. So that's essentially how it works. Now, Options can be customized, but most of them are standardized. But I will show you later in this chapter when we talk about option strategies. I will show you how you can customize uh, with the options to your needs and to whatever you speculate, you can customize options. That's pretty awesome, actually. Uh, so you can make money if your speculation is right or if what you believe is right, and you would lose money if it's wrong, obviously. That's the downside. But nonetheless, um, with options, you can essentially bet on increasing prices of the underlying and decreasing prices, even on stable prices of underlying. Or you can even speculate on price of underlying being stable around a certain value that's higher or lower. It is, yeah, the, the options with options are unlimited. Got it? <laughs> so anyway, yeah.
Um, let's see. Um, can be customized. Most are standardized. I'm traded on exchange. Yeah, so the, they are most standardized, as I mentioned, um, traded on exchange places just like stocks. Um, the option holder, the person who buys the option, that person has no obligation whatsoever. So he doesn't have to obviously post any margins because he, he cannot lose any money anymore after once he has bought the option. He pays it up front and after that he can only win. Of course he can lose by you know making no profit and what he paid is just loss. But the option writer has to post margins because he has to be able to deliver in case of course the option holder, the buyer of the option, wants to execute the right. There must be enough money to cover that so you do have to post margin as option writer and um, then beyond that um, so obviously there are call options and put options but also there are two types of call and put options uh, we have the, the one category which is the American option the other one is the European option option um, so they are, there's a small difference between the two. European option, you can execute the right only and only at the date of expiration. With the American option, you can exercise the right whenever you want from today until the day of expiration. Of course, after the expiration date. You cannot execute the right anymore. Not with the American and not with the European option. You don't have that right anymore. So you might think, well, yeah, the American option seems to be better right because you can execute the right at any time so for example let's say you, you you purchase a call option on tesla or whatever and the tesla stock prices go up which means your call option becomes more valuable you have you remember call option was the right to buy the underlying at a strike price so let's say you had you bought call options at the strike price of $250. Now, when you bought those Tesla stocks, they were worth $250. But uh, today, they are worth maybe $350. So they went up by 100 Now, the expiration date of the option is maybe in three months. Now, you think that's awesome. I made a huge profit by buying those options. I can exercise the right if it was you know, right for, let's say, 1,000 options. You can buy thousands, you have the right to buy thousand Tesla stocks at the price of $250 and you can sell them immediately for $350. You make $100 profit uh, per share, which is, uh, you know, since you have the right to buy thousand uh, stocks, you make $100,000 profit right away, right now, which is awesome. But, but you might think, wait a minute, if, if I don't do it today, you might not believe that stock prices of Tesla go further up and then you're afraid what if the price goes down I want to cash in I want to secure my you know profit so I want to execute my right which you can do with an American option with the European option you know if you want to exercise that right you have to wait until the expiration so that's a little bit of a hassle but you also have an exit way with the European option you can just sell them you can resell them on the stock exchange if it's a relatively liquid option where you can find easily a buyer, then that shouldn't be a big deal. You can probably cash in your profit, assuming that the option price has reacted accordingly. Uh, that becomes now very complicated. So imagine the Tesla stock price was with the strike price of, let's say, $450. Uh, when you bought them, they were way out of money. So you, the, 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 the Tesla stock was at 250, your strike price is 450. So each stock has to go up by over $200 in value so that, you know, you make some money uh, or, you know, that you exercise the right, that it's, it's uh, you know, uh, worth it to make, um, to exercise the right, um, that option at the end. Now, the, the stock prices have risen by $100, but there's only three months left until that option expires. And the chance that it goes up by another $100, if the market believes that that chance isn't very high, that option might not have gained so much in value, even though the underlying has gained a lot in value, right? So 
Yeah, so that's a little bit tricky. If you didn't understand that very last part, don't worry. It was kind of technical. Um, I will explain it again, that part in the class. So what do we use options for? Well, we can transfer risk from buyer to seller, obviously. So it can be used again both for hedging and speculation. So just like futures and forward, you can use them for hedging and you can use them for speculation. Now, who uses it for hedging? For example, someone who wants to purchase an asset in the future, uh, a call option ensures that the cost of buying the asset will not rise. So for example, you're an airline. Um, an airline uh, has, you know, the main major cost factor for an airline is the cost for kerosene. Kerosene is gained from oil, as we know. So the price of kerosene and the price of oil is highly uh, correlated, just like, you know, gasoline and oil prices. So airlines need constantly to purchase kerosene. And the one problem for them would be if the price of oil increases and kerosene becomes very expensive, suddenly their costs are very high. And so in order to make it more planable for the future, what they can do, they can buy call options with different expirations on the price of oil. In other words, if price of oil skyrockets, their call options gain in value and that gain in value compensates for the higher oil costs that they would need to, need to pay for. So they still have to pay the, the, the kerosene at a higher price, but the difference in price can be compensated with the call option because the call option accordingly also wins in, gains in value. So it's as if, you know, they are not paying that higher price, but of course, the whole thing comes at the price and that's you know what you pay for the call option itself and if the price of oil doesn't rise then you know you just paid for the call option you lost that money and oil price is still low so and then for someone who plans to sell an asset in the future put option ensures that they can sell it at the price that they want so let's say you or you are a, an energy company you're like i don't know uh, uh, shell or you know um, tech, Exxon Mobile or something like that. So you have oil fields where you extract the oil and you sell the oil. And of course, extracting the oil, it happens over time, over many years. And price of oil fluctuates, goes up and goes down. And you want to make sure that you are not, you don't sell it at a, at a lo too low price because then you wouldn't be able to cover your costs. Um, so what you can do is you can um, buy sell options on oil price which ensures you you know you have the right to sell the oil to someone else at a predetermined price which means if the price goes below that price you can still sell it at the at the strike price of let's say seven dollars per barrel or whatever um to the seller the seller has to buy it for you at seven dollars per barrel so that's how you can use options to hedge to get rid of risks but of course you can also use options it's purely for speculation and that is very simple um, if you for example believe that the price of the underlying goes up you buy a call option if you believe if you want to speculate that the price of underlying goes down you buy a put option so let's say um, let's stop it here for now and um i don't want this video to become longer it was already pretty long this is a very important video i hope you guys uh make sure that you understand it very thoroughly i can't emphasize it enough it's important that you understand this video for the, the next things that we will discuss in the class over the next weeks thank you very much